Hey, hey, everybody, Z Garcia here. Today we're going to be taking a look at a roll and write game with a Rick and Morty theme. This is the Morty Zone. In this game, each player is going to have their own dry erase board. They're going to be rolling dice in a communal roll, and then everyone will use those rolls to mark off spaces on their own board. You're going to be playing over three rounds. At the end of all three of those rounds, highest score is going to be the winner. It's a fairly familiar concept, so let's just go ahead and take a look at how the game works. We'll come on back after that, and I will tell you what I think of this one. The game is going to be played over three rounds, and at the end of each round, you'll write down your score, then you'll write down your grand total at the end, and whoever has the highest grand total, of course, is the winner of the whole thing. So each round is going to go like this. You are going to deal each player three public bonus cards, and these are things that if they accomplish, they'll get some bonus victory points for that. They are also going to have their own board, of course, a dry erase marker, and you are going to deal everyone one of these tokens. That is a secret goal. If you achieve that, you'll also get some victory points. Uh, during the game, you are trying to mark off spots in these four uh, lines in the different colors. The more of them you cross out, the higher a score you will receive. There are also bonuses down here, such as uh, if you check all of the threes and lower, you're going to score four victory points. That's all the threes, all the twos, all the ones in every color. And there's a few different bonuses there. All of the uh, even numbers in the bottom two colors, all of the odd numbers in the top two colors, things of that nature. So, how does each round work out once you've done all of this setup? Well, you're going to take all of these dice, and these, by the way, are enormous plastic dice, extremely heavy, quite unwieldy, to be honest. You're going to roll all of those, and then you are going to group them by color. So, we've got the green ones, and we've got the red ones, and the blue ones. And I'll just organize those according to the way they lie here on the boards. Once you've done that, everyone can use these dice simultaneously. And you are going to total up the, uh, the amount on the two dice. So, for example, in black, I rolled a 10. And then you are going to cross off either that number, 10, or any two digits that add up to that number. So, of course, the 6 and the 4. Uh, but I could also do the uh, 7 and the 3 if I want to. So, let's say I cross out the 7, I cross out the 3. And then I'll do the same thing for the green. I might just cross out the 7 on that one. And then the red, I might do on the red a 2 and a 5 to give me a 7. So, there we go, the 5 and the 2. And then on blue, I might take the 5 and the 1, just the way it is there. So, there we go. Everyone is doing that at the same time. Well, obviously, once you've crossed off a number, you will not be able to cross it off again. Uh, if you want to, you can also utilize one of these on that turn. So, for example, this one here says, I score one victory point for each six I have checked during a round. So, I'm going, I'm going to try to cross off those sixes, as many of them as possible, on the same round once I do that. So, let's say instead of doing all of this, I had taken, you know, that six, that six, perhaps, two of them. Uh, I would give myself two victory points right here, two, and then that's done. I could flip it over, whatever. Um, so that's done, and then the next player will roll. So they will take all these, and they will roll those. However, one thing you do before you mark off all of these numbers is you draw one of these Rick cards. And this is going to allow you to possibly modify that roll before it goes into effect and everyone utilizes it. So I'm, I'll roll them all. I'll set them up just like this, and then I'll grab this card and see what it does. In this case, I have a Shrimp Rick here that says, right on it, you may reduce one green die by one. So perhaps I wanted to make uh, the total, instead of being a seven, be a six. Perhaps I already marked off my seven, I needed to get my six. I might have done it even just to get that, that six bonus. So perhaps I do that. I discard that card, I utilize it, I uh, cross off a bunch of sixes. And then the next player, again, rolls all of these on their own turn. They organize them all, and then they draw their own. So here we've got another card, and this one says, you may increase one green die by one. So the opposite of this. And there are basic manipulations on this. Uh, you may remove one red die from this roll. You may choose a number, remove all dice with that number from this roll. Uh, let's see, you may... Uh, 
reduce, uh, choose a number, remove. You may re-roll one blue die, you may re-roll one green die, that sort of thing. Fairly straightforward, small manipulations of what the pool is. Eventually, of course, near the end of the round, you will not be able to mark off anything on one or several of these. So at that point, you just cross off the lock and that color is done for you. And once everyone has marked off the locks on all of their colors, then the round is over. You'll score one victory point for each X in a line. So, you know, if I've got quite a few here, let's say I got that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'll give myself a six there and so on. These bonuses you'll take into account. These, if you manage to uh, pull them off. And then that. In this case, it says, if you check uh, all eights, score this token. Great. So I would have probably tried for that, get another five victory points for this one. I add all of that up and I put it in my final total for the round. And then we play another round in which we shuffle all this, shuffle this deck back up again, and everyone gets three new public bonus cards and one of these new crystals. And then you do it a third time. And that's the game. So obviously you will erase all of this upper part while leaving uh, and, and the rest of these boxes, except for the final totals and leave that alone so you can add up your uh, three rounds into a grand total at the end. So there you go. Very straightforward. That should give you a pretty good idea of how this all goes together. Uh, in here, I could tell you a couple of these. Uh, once, so some, some of them are more points. Some of them are not, like this one here, Pickle Rick, is going to be once this round, check one green number. You may check a locked color, but it's zero points. It's just an extra ability. Uh, technically one point, right? This one here, Evil Morty, at end of round, if, you're, if, if each of your vertical number columns has at least one unchecked number, score this card. Uh, this one, once per round, check a red number. If you checked blacks 6 through 10, score this card for 6 victory points. That sort of thing. So there you go. That should do it. Let's go ahead and go back up top. Let me give you some final thoughts. Alright, so there it is, the Morty Zone. This is based on an episode of Rick and Morty that I actually haven't seen myself. So I don't, um, I don't know how well tied it is to that episode, but I'm going to assume they did a good job with that. They, uh, there's been a bunch of these Rick and Morty games, and usually one thing that they do really well is tie what's going on in the episode to whatever game they make. So we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, break this down a little bit. I'm going to start with thematic ties. Like I said, I don't know how well this ties to the episode, but the fact that it is a roll and write does feel very much tacked on. It does not feel natural. I don't know why it's a roll and write. Uh, I don't know why it's that style of game. There was one previous game that was a Rick and Morty game that was a tile placement game. I forget what it was called. And it felt, uh, the, the one where you're building a park, it felt very uh, natural. It, it, the, the idea of tile selection and growing the board felt natural to what was going on. You were exploring, building out a park. This one does not feel like it has anything to do with the characters and the, the wacky sort of uh, goings on in the game. It just feels like they needed a new mechanism and they've already done, you know, deck building and tile placement and this and that. So roll and write. Um, the aesthetics here are fine for the most part, but the dice in this box are ridiculous. They are way too large. They are unwieldy. They did not need to be like this. I don't know why they are. Maybe they had these massive plastic dice left over from something, but I don't think it's a good, uh, they, they don't seem like a good idea to me. I thought they were uh, not fun to roll. They're too big. They're just not manageable, no, not very well manageable. I guess you could argue, oh, they're that big so that everybody can see them. No, they, they don't need to be that big. So there's that. Replayability here is okay. There's a decent amount of variety in the personal uh, goals that everybody has. So that's nice. And I do think that the game scales well uh, it, it, because everybody's doing stuff at the same time. So, you know, it doesn't matter if you're playing with two or playing with four. It's about the same. Everyone's doing their own thing on their own turn, you know, on, on every turn. So that's fine. No issues there. Game length, I do have a big problem with. I think three rounds is way too long for this game. 
I would have been fine with one round, honestly. If they want to do more than one, then two. That's it. I was done with this game by the third round. It's just the exact same thing again. You don't even carry anything over except literally the score. It's like playing one game three times, but you're forced to as per the rules. You could play two rounds. I realize you can modify this very easily. That's not what the rules say. The rules say you play three rounds. I think that's too long. If there was something you unlocked at the end of round one and you kept that, great. If there was something you unlocked at the end of round two and then did that, great. Maybe you could carry over one of your three goals from the first round to the second. And maybe you would be dealt two new ones. Maybe from those two, you'd carry out one more, carry over one more. Um, you get a new set of three each time. The ease of play here is pretty good. It's an easy game to follow. There's not a lot to it. It's a straightforward concept. It's a concept we've seen before, that's for sure. Uh, so no problem there. And then lastly, tactics and strategy and luck. You know, I like the idea of being able to mark two, you know, put two ticks out there instead of one based on that one roll. That's cool. That's the one thing in this whole game that I thought was pretty neat. You know, you, you're combining a roll between two dice, you've got a nine, you can mark off that nine. But you can also do the three and the six. I like that, you know, that's a nice little twist. Because most everything else in this game is basically quicks, another roll and write, with more stuff and more chaos. This is definitely a game that you will, if you are a fan of roll and rights, you will feel like you've played pretty much this game before. It's not very original. There's not a lot here that feels fresh, feels new. This feels like, hey, we can do a version of this whole roll and write rigmarole as well. And this one's pretty close to quicks. It's almost the same thing. So overall, I thought there was some fun to be had here, though the game feels a little bit late to the party. Uh, and you know, it's it's things we've seen already, but of the ones I've played in the Rick and Morty line of games, like I said, got quite a few, I would say this is actually one of the better ones. It's one of the ones I had the mo most fun with. But it's still not a superb game. I've seen all this before. I've liked it already. So there is that. Here's my bottom line. Too long for what it is. But there is some fun here. Especially for fans of the show. That's pretty much it. This is going to get a 6 out of 10 from me. So if you really like Rick and Morty. And you want uh, a roll and write game. That uses some of that humor. Some of that artwork in it. This is a good one. I like that it's you know a dry erase. So that's nice. You're not going to burn through sheets of paper. But if you've already got a decent amount of roll and write games, it's a genre you're familiar with, you've probably played most of this already. So I don't think you'll need it. There it is. All right, everybody, that is Rick and Morty, The Morty Zone. Thanks for checking this out with me. I will see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.